What is up? There is a new axe combo. Let's talk about it. Now, hopefully you've heard by now that there is an all new axe combo coming. It was announced as motors and speed controls, but rest assured they'll be sold as combos. It's four new motors all together and a new speed control. And the difference is in the speed control, uh, we'll get to, but let's talk about the size of the motor. It's a 550. 3300 kV motor or a 540L 1400, 2100, and 2800 kV. So these new motors are replacing the old motors and they've got a new, much smaller sensor harness. There's been some changes internally to add some shielding to prevent uh, servos that are real close to the motors any problems. And they are new sizes. I have the old motors here for comparison, and you can see that this is the old 550, this is the new 550. The new 550 is about a millimeter or two shorter. Let's, uh, I got some calipers here, we can check. So this is the new 550, the R2. It is 63, you call it 64, and this guy is 66. So about two millimeters difference between the two of them, that this one is shorter. But what I'm excited about is these new sensor harnesses. The old ones are pretty big and clunky. Like, you mean, there's a pretty significant size difference there between the two of them. Uh, the new R2 will only be available in the 3300 kV, because with a 2800 kV 540L, there wasn't really a need for the 540, or the 2700 kV. So this is the 540L, and we're going to throw some calipers on this guy as well. As far as the length goes, that is 57 We'll call it 58 millimeters and then push the button and you get 2.27 or 2.3 inches basically two and a quarter you know you could call it two inches and talk about the motor sizes let's talk about some of the things that are new in the speed control i got some pre-production speed controls i've been running these r2 setups for geez several weeks now maybe even a few months and they've been fantastic they have all of the great stuff that you're used to in an foc but the Slightly larger 540 motors have a little bit more torque and the different KVs are just, you know, changes the wheel speed that I was used to. So I was a big fan of the 2300 before, but I tell you what, I've been running the 2800 in my axial for a minute now and it's it's quite nice to have all that wheel speed on top even with a single speed anyway more to the point speed control differences re retains the reverse polarity protection of course because that's been a key has the bluetooth still built into it but what has changed is the axe is now capable of normal basher modes which is very cool in case you get into situations where you don't want to rock crawl and just drive around normally it's nice to have that uh brakes in the middle and, and kind of normal driving instead of rock crawl driving and it has added in some data logging now too and that also comes along with the new hobby wing app the hw link v2 it might not be on your app store right now but we do have some links down below with a barcode that you can scan with your phone and that'll take you right to it they're working out all the final details on all that stuff right? but the main difference externally on the speed control mine don't have stickers on them because they're pre-production but if you look on the top here there's a uh, little nubs let's see if i can show you those see the little raised sections there that's for the fan mount I don't run fans on my axes. I never have. I've, I always pop them off right away, and I've been you know, pretty good luck that regard. But if you do find yourself needing the fan, the reason that these ridges are here is it spaces the fan up a little bit, and it allows the air to move underneath a little. So that's the main external difference that you're going to see in these guys. And that does change uh, the height just slightly. So before, you know, it was just flush with the top. You were at like one inch, and now you're going to add... A 0.05 and you know, a little bit of space there and then we'll go like this you got uh, 24 and a half and then to the top a little nub is 26 and a half call it there's always some bad news when there's an update and that you know people want to know can I use the r2 with the old original axe motors and speed controls or vice versa and the, the, I'm just gonna cut to the chase no you can't 
A couple things changed, not only in the sensor harness, but some other hardware things. So unfortunately, we are not able to just make a simple adapter that goes from the new style plug to the old style plug. Other than that, all the improvements are fantastic. The old axes are, you know, going to move by the wayside now that they're being replaced by the Axe R2 version. Because, you know, like anything, nobody wants the bigger sensor harness and all the features that are here. Everything that the old Axe has and, you know, a little bit more. So why not? I, like I said, I've been running this combo in my Axial for a long time. And I got it all sealed up waterproof nicely. And I took it through some water bashing. We'll throw some of those clips in at the end. It was pretty rough on the truck, to say the least, and it, it came through with fine colors. But they do come apart, you know, pretty easy, but not like, you know, I'm yanking on that thing. It's not going to just fall apart. You got to kind of give it a wiggle and a pretty firm pull to get them to come apart. So it's not like they're just going to fall out. But you see, pretty good seal. Oh, I have th this is the one I pulled out of my truck that I've been running. It has two sets of plugs on it because I was janky and we were doing some night crawling. And I wanted to hot wire some lights in there, so I just put those on top. And then this setup, because I was using my monster truck, huge three cells for max runtime, it had XT90s on it, so I did that. All right, so let's take a look at some of the new settings and what's in the new app. I we're gonna turn the speed control on, lights on, open up the app, and then you go in. Tap the speed control icon, or the little link icon there. Ooh. HW. And then let's go into parameters right away. This is kind of rough to see, huh? It says parameters loading. All right, there we go. Now we're in. So this is the new app. You got running mode, forward and reverse, and you see this is the, the new feature. Oh, man, that, you can't even see that. Forward and reverse, and then you got forward reverse with brake. That's like the normal basher mode. So that's the new one. Voltage cutoff, all that stays the same. Instead of giving numbers, it says low, intermediate, and high. Low is like, you know, 3.3. Intermediate is like, you know, 3.5, 3.7, and high is probably above 3.7 per volt on LiPo cutoff. The throttle matching is still adjustable. This is for how one-to-one -one the throttle is. So if you want it to have that stall, you can lower this. If you want it to be, you know, very direct, you leave it an intermediate or high. Max forward force, you can turn down the forward speed if you want to. Max reverse force, same thing, you can turn down the reverse speed. This has... I always jokingly called it rock boost, but it's a turbo advance for the motor. So you can make it add a little bit of timing um, or boost, if you will. We call it turbo when it comes on after full throttle on the racing speed controls. That retains here, so it's called turbo. And you can have pretty low amounts. It only goes up to 10 degrees because it'll just add a little bit of wheel speed. And then you get a delay after full throttle. So that's how long after you get to full throttle before that kicks in. I like to set it long just so I could hear it because I like to show people the timing. That's all. But... It just adds a little wheel speed, and with that, you'll get a little temperature gain and uh, maybe a little runtime loss is about it. Drag brake force is how strong your neutral brake or your auto brake is when you're sitting on the hills and it stops. And then drag brake increase rate, this is how quickly it applies the brakes. I really like this on auto because it's speed sensitive. When you're driving fast and you let off the throttle, it applies the brakes real slowly. If you're going slow, it snaps them on a little harder. And that has made the axe really good for not just rock crawl driving, but bashing around on the rocks or in the dirt. But drag brake increase rate on auto kind of mimics um, a non-crawling mode. It just slows the brake application down when you're going fast. It's, I, I really like it. Next up, uh, neutral range is like your dead band in your throttle. Usually you can leave that alone. If your neutral is real sensitive or you see your motor kind of ticking and jerking and doing funny stuff, it's picking up neutral noise and you can increase that neutral range to get rid of that. So that, that's kind of what that's for. Throttle increase rate. I like to turn this all the way up on my stuff because that makes the throttle most linear. If you don't like how linear the throttle is or like, you know, snap throttle and you don't want it to snap throttle all the time, you can lower the throttle increase rate. BEC voltage is is the power output to the receiver obviously six volts or 7.4 um, all my servos are seven point or six volt servos and realistically even if you run the high voltage servos you can leave the BEC voltage on six volts it makes them run a little cooler you lose a little power but that's about it and then motor rotation is exactly that the forward rotation of the motor so you if you put the motor if you put the setup in your vehicle and it goes the wrong way like you give a throttle and it goes backwards after you calibrate it you could change that here. You don't want to change it in your radio. You use motor rotation. 
And that's all the settings. You know, most of it's the same. Like I said, the biggest change is the, the running mode. That's the settings. Let's take a look at the data logging feature, which is something that's a little unique here and all new, I, I suppose is the easiest way to say it, is there's real time data. So the speed control's on right now. I got the radio and it runs. My app is open and I'm gonna connect to the speed control. It's gonna ask me which one. I'm gonna go to the Hobby Wink one. Yeah, sorry, the glare, but I just tapped on the HW one. And once that connects, we can go to data log. And down here on the bottom, it says real time data. So we click that one. And now you can see that it is live, live action for what the speed control is doing. Let me give it some throttle here. But that's. All right, and then the throttle position, if you see there, it says 5%. That's because this one has the cruise control on the radio. So if I turn my throttle trim up, the motor's running real, real slowly. Let's see how low we can get it. It's barely going. One more click down. 600, 500 here. I could put some load on it, and you see it fights real hard. To keep it, I'm just, I'm just, you know, pinching it with my finger, so that's not a lot of load. But that's pretty cool, real-time data. So this will, you'll be able to hook this up while you drive the truck around and look at what's going on. You can see the voltage to the speed control, temperature of the speed control, temperature of the motor, throttle position, and how much current the speed control is drawing too. This is just on the bench top, but in the car, it, it works the same. For rock crawlers, this is kind of cool because you're never very far from the truck anyway. So the Bluetooth range being a few meters. A few meters. I keep talking in metric. I'm sorry, folks. For the range being, you know, 10, 20 feet or what's a few meters, it's pretty good. You're never that far away from your, your vehicle anyway. I haven't tried to test the range, but basically because the motor stays operational, all it's going to do is disconnect and, and not really care. So you can get in and do even more. Like, let's say, for example, you know all your information on your tire sizes and all that fun stuff. You can go in here and punch this in, and it'll sh show the output as miles an hour. So let's switch this to miles an hour, hit OK, and then you change this button here to speed, and it changes. This is not accurate, obviously, but it's pretty cool that you can have a speedometer on your truck, and then if you calculate all that correctly, you'll be able to get it back to normal. I still have the trim going, sorry. All right, so we'll get back out of here, and then you can just disconnect, say ESC is disconnected, close the program, and away you go. All right, it looks like right through all of this. <laughs>
as always, folks, thanks for watching. We appreciate you tuning in. If you do have more questions about the all-new Axe R2 system, please check the link in the description down below. Some of this information is a little loose and from the hip, so of course we got the official links with all the hard data and information on the app, the sizes. Next question is, when are they going to be available? Very, very soon. I, I do believe the warehouse is stocking now, getting things out to your local dealers, so they will be the first ones to have it. Don't forget, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. Thanks a lot, everybody.